Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a one sample sign test using Microsoft Excel. Note that often a one sample will coxen test is actually preferred, so if you're interested in that, check out my video on how to perform one of those with Excel. Now in this example uh, I have some data, it's made up data in column A, and um, for a one sample sign test it's going to test if the median will be different than one that you might expect in the population based on your sample. So I'm going to expect that the median for example in my population would be 10 and I'm going to see if my sample here uh, can convince me otherwise. So the first thing I need is to determine how many uh, cases I actually have below 10. So below my assumed median. So in this case, that's going to be count if, no, not count, count if. And then all my data is in column A, so I can simply select the entire column. And then in order to get a less than, I need quotation signs, use the ampersand sign, and then the hypothesized median. Then also, if you want, you can also do this for how many are above. So I could say equals uh, count if, and then the range is the column A, and the criteria then is how many are actually above, and that one. Now note that uh, we have below or above, so if they're equal, they are ignored. So I actually have two of them that are equal to this median, so these are ignored, and for this test, we therefore have equals sum, or alt equals, 24 cases to be considered. Now, if the median would have been indeed 10 uh, in our population and also in our sample, then we would have expected um, to have both of these two groups the same amount. So in this case, that would have been 24 times 0.5, so we would have expected 12 cases in each of these two groups. Now there is a difference. The big question is, is there a significant difference? Well. A significant would indicate a deviation of or more uh, as extreme so it depends a little bit if it's higher like the below one so s I have 17 cases expected 12 so I would actually like to know 17 or more but if it's below so with this one the 7 for example then I would have uh, gone for 7 or less so I need to figure out if it's or more or less oops I forgot to remove these um, so I can actually use an if function for that, equals if, and then if, of course, this value is uh, greater than uh, the expected value, and I'm going to block that actually by using dollar signs, then I'm interested in or more, and otherwise I'm interested in or less. And now I can simply copy paste this formula, and now it shows me for the n above that I'm interested there in or less. Then I can use the binomial distribution, and that's a bit of a long formula there. You're just missing the end of it. Ooh, even longer. There we go. Because if it's or more, I actually need to somewhat flip the problem around into an or less. I have some separate videos about binomial tests where I explain all this, um, but it means in this case, if uh, my value up here is actually that or more or more then uh, I cannot use the basic one I will need to flip the problem around into an or less and then subtract it from one so one minus and then binomial dist uh, you can either use the dot dist that's the newer function or if you have an older Excel simply the dist I'll use the dot this, the slightly newer one, but it doesn't really matter much. Um, I'm interested then in the 17 minus 1, and then as a number of trials, it's going to be this 24, and the expected probability is going to be 0 0.5, and then I want it to be cumulative. Now in all other cases, I can simply use the binomial distribution. Again, you can also use the older version. And then the number of trials is going to be this one. Uh, then the, sorry, uh, the number of successes was that. The number of trials is of course H11 
with the total 24 dollar signs you can press f4 actually that's a shortcut to enter all those dollar signs then the probability of success 50 50 and cumulative is uh, true close everything up and I can simply copy paste as you can see these two will always be the same and finally we can therefore determine the two-tailed significance which is simply the one of these two multiplied by each uh, by two or simply add them up and we we'll get to 0 0.06 so there's insufficient evidence to uh, reject the option that the population median might be 10 we're not saying it is going to be 10 we're just saying we have insufficient data to um, to state otherwise uh, as you might notice, I actually made a nice little uh, user-defined function in Excel. If you're interested in that, it would require some macros. I could leave a link to that one in the description below, but let me know in the comment section. And that is actually it. That's how you can determine uh, the significance of a one-sample sign test with Excel. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if so, please like and subscribe, etc., etc. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope it was helpful.